Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode in 100 Tips That Only a Grandmaster Knows. I'm going to be talking about how to deal with, in my opinion, the extremely annoying placement of a knight on f5 or f4. So obviously, anything we talk about can apply to both colors here uh, and can apply to different positions as well. It really just revolves around the placement, the aggressive placement of a knight. So I'm talking about this. Just got this random position here. I'm just going to kind of throw pieces on the board as we talk about it. But knight on f5, very, very annoying piece. Honestly, a very aggressive piece. Um, you might have a bishop on c8. And yeah, you could take that knight, absolutely. You can get rid of it, but it's not always going to be in your interest to just give away your, your bishop for your opponent's knight. That knight might be protected. You might not want to see that pawn near your king. There's a number of reasons why this is not a reliable way to deal with this knight. It might be the best move from time to time, but it's certainly not something you can rely on. So, um, you know, it's, it's important to know how to be able to kick this knight out effectively. The reason I have the pawns on h3 and h6 is because, first of all, that's a normal move that most of us are going to include in our games where we're castling kingside, and it makes the knight that much more annoying to deal with because if you want to kick it out with g6, the move that most of us would be thinking of, the h pawn will always hang, and that goes for white as well. So you have to think about the other pieces that you might have on the board. Now, if black has this uh, bishop, it could be out on b4, c5, it could be on e7, but... When you see a knight on f5, it's usually a fantastic idea to drop it back to f8. It doesn't matter where it is on the board. Uh, it might feel crazier the further out it is because you feel like you're just undeveloping the piece. But I promise you, as soon as you kick this knight out with g6, the bishop will be well placed, not only guarding the h-pawn, but ready to play bishop g7 to cover the dark square weaknesses that you just created with g6. Okay. So you might be thinking, okay, well, this is all hypothetical. White's obviously going to have some bishop over here, right? And then the pawn's going to be hit again. So it's not that easy to just play bishop f8 and g6. Now, sometimes this is all you'll need. Bishop uh, f8 or f1, push the pawn forward. The knight will have to retreat. You've got your bishop set up perfectly. But more than likely, they'll have another piece hitting h6. So you need another ingredient. You need king h7. This is the next part of kicking out this knight, and it's so, it's so important to remember. This move is useful to defend the h6 pawn, and, you know, there might be like a queen g4 move white's trying to play, so king h7 is pretty useful uh, in almost any case. Uh, and yeah, we're ready to play uh, g6 now. Once again, the knight will have to retreat, and we'll play bishop g7, kind of all the same thing. Now let's say, for some reason, it's a very specific position, white has like a queen on this diagonal, right, hitting this pawn, you still cannot play g6. More often than not, you'll have this knight on f6. And the reason I mention this is because the final way to ensure you can always remove a knight from f5 is the strange knight g8. Obviously, this applies to white with knight g1 as well. But you play this move to once again support the h-pawn so that, yes, you can finally play g6. It's been a long time coming, but that move will kick the knight out. And uh, what do you know? If, if the knight retreats to g3, you're set up with a pawn on g6 against it. And if you guys have watched previous episodes of this 100 tips series, hopefully you remember that one. But these moves right here, I know they look weird, but once you play this move g6, the knight will have to retreat, and then everything can sort of snap back to normal. Bring this bishop out. Bring the knight out. It always pays off, right, to, to know how to remove that knight properly. And sometimes you might be in a position like this where they've got that queen on f3. And I would just say, remember in these cases that um, the move g6, yes, you, you want to play it in these ways, but also keep an eye out for a very well-known tactic that involves a knight on f5 or f4. It's the most common. It will really hurt if you are not even aware of it. And it's knight takes h6 when your f six knight is hanging and the same thing applies to white if black had a knight on f4 as well so just make sure that if you have a position like this that your knight's defended a lot of times you'll just naturally have a queen on d8 or something so it'll it'll be defended but let's say your queen is over here you know it might be time to uh maybe play rook e6 or bring it back to d8 because you have to watch out for knight takes h6 it's going to hurt 
And obviously, to facilitate everything I'm saying here with a castled king, how do we even get our bishop back there? Of course, it means we probably had to move our rook from f8 to e8. So, in preparation, if you see a knight arriving to the f5 square, like making its journey, you can start to get ready by maybe getting your rook out of the way. Preparing the f8 square for your bishop, and then getting ready to deal with it. If a knight shows up there already, before you're ready to deal with it, then keep in mind this bishop back to f8, king h7, and if needed, knight g8. Sometimes bishop f8 will be enough. You just play g6 next turn, but in the case that it's attacked, the h-pawn is attacked more times than uh, just once, you might need to add king h7 or add also knight g8. But depending on which moves are even available to you in the position, it's just nice to know all of the possible ones to consider and all of the sneaky tactics that white might get up to. And this obviously applies to both sides, but enough of me just randomly throwing pieces on the analysis board here. I've talked about the tip, I've explained the tip, and let me show you exactly what I mean, because I had a game where actually an opponent of mine used this super effectively in a rapid game. I was really impressed, and I was like, you know what? I gotta, I gotta add this to the video because uh, this is the perfect example. It's one thing for me to sit there and execute all these things. And I, oh, wow, like he's a GM. Of course it works when he does it. So I wanted to show you guys uh, a great, great example here of someone untitled, 2300, and he just was aware of this idea, clearly. I did go on to win the game, but I give a lot of props to my opponent for his play in this next series of moves. So knight f4 was played, and d4, knight e7. I'm thinking, okay, I'm bringing my knight here. If he moves his queen anywhere, I've got that nasty knight takes h3 trick. I might even have a sacrifice coming up with bishop takes h3. I don't know. I'm starting to get excited thinking about all the ideas here. And he plays bishop f1. The bishop from b5 all the way back to f1. How many of us would have the confidence to play that move? I don't know. But I'm reminding everyone here that when you're dealing with a knight on f4, it is such a good move to play. Okay, I promise you, you won't regret it. So bishop f1. I play knight here thinking, okay, well, this pawn's still attacked. Maybe I have knight h4 next. King h2. It's everything that we just talked about. If necessary, yes, the knight can retreat there. Like maybe if I played queen e6 here, white might play knight g1 and then g3. And notice how this knight on f4, it's actually trapped, right? It doesn't have any good squares to go to. Like the h5 square, especially after knight g1, wouldn't even be available. So starting to, to turn into a really bad position, all because white knows exactly how to deal with it. Bishop f1, king h2, and look what happened. g3, knight back, bishop g2, exactly as we discussed. And suddenly my knights are terribly placed. They're completely dominated by the g-pawn. And yeah, my opponent just had a very, very nice position here. There's nothing I could do, right? When, you, when you're familiar with the correct plans and ways to handle certain structures or certain pieces, even a GM on the other side, has to sit there and just retreat the knight, right? There's there's nothing I, that I could have done about that. So it kind of just outplayed me there during that series of moves. So I thought this was a really good example. I know firsthand how annoying those active and aggressive knights can be, like knight on f5, knight on f4. I just feel like the average person sees that and gets mated. So don't forget the main threat that people are going to be intending with that knight there. That tricky knight takes h3 idea, it could be a sacrifice, or it just could be that idea to win a pawn by uh, taking your, your knight on f3 after. And remember the ingredients that you're going to need to deal with this in the future. It usually involves getting your rook out of the way, preparing the vacant f1 square, or f8 of course, and then king h2 if necessary. Basically, as soon as the h-pawn is defended sufficiently, then you push g3. And if needed, yes, you can play knight g1 if you need to like add all the firepower to defend that h-pawn, but you will generally not ever need more than your bishop, your knight, and your king. So uh, I think those are the only moves you're going to need, and hopefully from now on that knight does not wreck as much havoc uh, in your position or, or to your game that it has in the past, because even if you watch a high-level game, uh, look out for this idea now, but if you watch a high-level game, e4, e5 is the most common where you'll see the knights end up there just because of the natural maneuvers that go on in that, that opening, like the Rui Lopez, for example. But if you watch a high-level game, trust me, you will see that if knight makes it there, it will be dealt with most likely in a similar fashion to what we've discussed here. So, like I said, I hope that you're no longer going to be scared of those aggressive knights and at least have a bit more confidence dealing with them. 
good luck applying it in your games, and I will see everybody for the next video.